Hi guys. It is a hot, muggy summer day in March <clears throat> here in this undisclosed swamp here at Crazy Rain Campground on this sticky Tuesday. It is March 30th, 2021 and uh, <laughs> I, I'm going to go somewhere where I never thought I would go to on um, Collapse Chronicles. We're going to hear from none or other than Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders uh, in, in a moment. <clears throat> but before I do, I, I just had to share this comment that just came in 20 minutes ago from, uh, I'm assuming, master satirist Loey Apitz. I guess. What does Lowy have to say about the situation on the planet, about the great awakening of humanity? <clears throat> the pandemic, economic depression, and climate change will not change mankind. But what about the worldwide rise in teen suicides? This, the worldwide rise in teen suicides, this will force humanity to reevaluate the way we proceed in this existential catastrophe. <laughs> my, uh, my response to Loey Apitz, <clears throat> I honestly do not know if you are being ironic or not in this hilarious comment. I will give you the benefit of the doubt that you are a master satirist as nobody watching this channel would make such a comment without being ironic. Yes, the, uh, is there anybody on the planet believing the worldwide rise in, te in teen suicides will force humanity to reevaluate the way we proceed in this existential catastrophe. But speaking of existential catastrophes, we're going to go over to the Guardian and hear from uh, our favorite little lefty, Bernie Sanders, Senator Bernie Sanders. And guys, I, I guess I just need to clarify. Uh, apparently, people are misinterpreting my comments <clears throat> about lefties, little greeny lefties. Uh, they are interpreting that as meaning that I, Sam Mitchell, am uh, a right winger. Uh, and I just need to clarify for the record, uh, my problem with lefties is that they are right-wingers, that I am so far to the left, I am such a lefty that I do spend more time rubbing shoulders, uh, I'm fine with, with right-wingers uh, more and more uh, than I do the soft left. But with that little disclaimer out of the way, this isn't, so you, you, you can figure out what this has to do with the collapse of a planet, uh, it, it has a hell of a lot to do with the ongoing economic societal collapse, which is all part of the ball of wax. So we're going to let Bernie Sanders tell us about income inequality. <clears throat> the rich poor gap in America is obscene. So let's fix it. Here's how. So we're going to stick with the first half of this article, and I'm not going to insult your intelligence with Bernie Sanders' plan <clears throat> to fix, about how to fix the rich-poor gap in America. We won't go there with that ridiculous uh, hopium-soaked apocalyptimism but at least Bernie gets what the problem is. Take it away, Bernie Sanders, for your first, for your first uh, romp over here at Collapse Chronicles. <clears throat> 
the United States cannot prosper and remain a vigorous democracy when so few have so much and so many have so little. While many of my congressional colleagues choose to ignore it, the issue of income and wealth inequality is one of the great moral, economic, and political crises that we face, and it must be dealt with. Yes, the unfortunate reality is that we are moving rapidly toward an oligarchic form of society where a handful of billionaires have enormous wealth and power while working families have been struggling in a way we have not seen since the Great Depression. This situation has been exacerbated by the Corona Panic. <clears throat> Today, today, half of our people, meaning half of Americans, are living paycheck to paycheck. 500,000 of the very poorest among us are now homeless. Millions are worried about evictions. <clears throat> 92 million Americans, including Sam Mitchell of Collapse Chronicles, are uninsured or underinsured, and families all across the country are worried about how they are going to feed their kids. Well, maybe they should have worried about that before they had their kids, Bernie, but I'm not going to uh, get off on that rant. Anyway, back to Bernie. <clears throat> Today, an entire generation of young people carry an outrageous level of student debt and face the reality that their standard of living will be lower than their parents. And most obscenely, low-income Americans now have a life expectancy that is about 15 years lower than the wealthy. Poverty in America has become a death sentence. <clears throat> Meanwhile, the people on top have never had it <clears throat> so good. The top 1% now own more wealth than the bottom 92%, and the 50 wealthiest Americans own more wealth than the bottom half of American society, 165 million people. We will get back to the wealthiest Americans in a minute here. While millions of Americans have lost their jobs and incomes during the Corona Panic, over the past year, 650 billionaires have seen their wealth increase by $1.3 trillion. There you go. The growing gap between the very rich and everyone else is nothing new. Over the past 40 years, there has been a massive transfer of wealth from the middle class and working families to the very wealthiest people in America. In 1978, the top 0.1% owned about 7% of the nation's wealth. In 2019, the latest year of data available, they own, they own nearly 20%. And of course, that number uh, surged even higher last year because of the Corona panic. Unbelievably, unbelievably, the two richest people in America, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, now own more wealth than the bottom 40% of Americans combined. I'm not sure why he didn't uh, throw Bill Gates uh, I would like to know how, 
the three richest people in America, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk. Uh, so if Jeff and Elon own more than the bottom 40% and the 50 own more than the bottom 50%, if you added Bill Gates in there, I would guess that the three richest people in America, Jeff, Elon, and Uncle Billy, my guess is now own more wealth than the bottom 43 to 45 percent of Americans combined, would be my guess. <clears throat> if income equality had not skyrocketed over the past four decades and had simply stayed static, the average worker in America would now be earning $42,000 more in income each year. Instead, as corporate chief executives now make over 300 times more than the average employees, the average American worker now earns $32 a week less than he or she did 48 years ago after adjusting for inflation. In other words, despite huge increases in technology and productivity, ordinary workers are actually losing ground. Addressing income and wealth and addressing income and wealth and inequality will not be easy because we will be taking on some of the most powerful and well-financed entities in the country, including Wall Street, the health insurance industry, the drug companies, the fossil fuel industry, and do not forget the military industrial complex, but it must be done. Here is somewhat some of what Congress and the president can do in the very near future. And from there, uh, uh, Uncle Bernie's little treatise here, he uh, completely leaves uh, reality and just descends into this uh, just mishmash of uh, hilarity uh, with uh, making about as much sense as stating that the rising pandemic of teen suicides will force humanity to deal with this existential crisis. Uh, but let's wind up, let's move to the bottom of this hopium and wrap it up. Uh, <clears throat> growing income and wealth inequality is not just an economic issue, it touches the very foundation of American democracy. Mm -hmm. If the very rich become much richer, while millions of working people see their standard of living continue to decline, faith in government and our democratic institutions will wither and support for authoritarianism will increase. We cannot let that happen. No, we cannot let that happen. Uh, and you know, it just begs the question, how many of these uh, people whose uh, paychecks have slid while the 650 billionaires have seen their wealth increase by, what was it, $1.3 trillion or whatever, voted for Donald Trump uh, in 2020 and will vote for him again in 2024 as uh, faith in government and our democratic institutions will wither and support for authoritarianism will increase. <clears throat> uh, support for authoritarianism is, is one of the 
uh, obvious classic symptoms of an empire uh, in free fall collapse, which is exactly what uh, the, the American empire is, is in. And uh, this is one of the most classic signs that you see over and over and over again uh, throughout history. You, you don't need to have a PhD in uh, collapsology to understand that uh, this is one of the number one indicators that the American empire is over and done with. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I guess depends on your philosophy. Are you or are you not a doomer? Bernie Sanders is not a doomer. Anyway, with that, it looks like the line of thunderstorms is rolling in. And I need to go throw a tarp over the firewood. Bye, guys.